Bienvenidos a Nuevo México. I was born and raised in New Mexico, the state with the highest percentage of Latino and Hispanic Americans, and the state with the second highest Native American population, coming in just after Alaska. However, 99.4% of my DNA comes from Europe. Like most New Mexicans, I speak a little Spanish, I like my tacos and my burritos, but it is interesting to say the least to grow up in a state influenced by so many different cultures. Two months ago, I turned 21. You may think it is an event worth celebrating with a trip to Vegas 600 miles away, but to me, I somehow felt mountain pressure. As a senior business major, I know Social Security would be in the red come 2034, and that same year, debt held by the public will exceed 106% of our GDP. If you are already collecting Social Security benefit, you may not need to worry, but for people in my generation, we have to worry about how to pay the bills. So you see, unlike the generations of my parents or my grandparents, I have to think about our future, because I would be the one paying for it. That's why I've voted in every election since I turned 18. You may not believe that just one vote counts, but I know that what I believe and what every other person believes matters, now and for a long time into the future. But understanding public policy is harder than you think. Because candidates don't get on the ballot if they can't turn ordinary people into believers, New Mexico is a swing state. In the past 27 presidential elections, we voted 15 times for Democrat, 12 times for Republicans, and I guess people just can't count on us for voter loyalty. Even now, we have a Republican governor and two Democrat senators. I have to admit I was a little bit confused during election times. I have many Latino friends, but I thought building a border wall could bring money and jobs to New Mexico, especially with the promise of Mexico paying for it. When I realized Mexico's refusal to pick up the tab because they had no incentive to do such, I decided to ride on the fence. That way I wouldn't have to pay the $21.6 billion plus interest to build this border wall. Another political debate I paid attention to about is the diversity visa program. I never had issues with racial equality, but when Saifulu Habibulovich Saipov, a diversity visa immigrant from Uzbekistan, killed eight and injured 11 when he drove his truck down a bike path in lower Manhattan, I started to wonder if it was better to have a merit-based only immigration system, especially when White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders indicated that diversity visa lottery recipients lack thorough vetting. But then PolitiFact protested on the statement, as all diversity visa recipients had to undergo background checks, security screenings, and interviews by counselor officers. So who should I believe? Who spreads fake news? After searching extensively on the internet, I found one had to be the lucky 50,000 picked from the 20 million applicants every year to get the visa. That's 0.25% of a chance of winning the lottery. I guess you could be that lucky, then maybe it is not a bad thing to have them join the Joy Luck Club in America. Unlike a lot of people my age, I am interested in politics, history, geography, the news, economy, sports. But with so much attack on the media lately, everyone called everyone else fake news. I don't know who to trust anymore. But our team ran into this young man who agreed to share his story on camera. Adios. When you see me in Albuquerque, you probably think I'm just another chilly loving New Mexican. Well, you're wrong. I'm different. I'm different from most from the inside out. For one, I have a high capacity lungs that can survive in harsh, cold winter even in high altitude. Actually, my strength disqualifies me. If I were the first to conquer the world highest mountain, well, they would call that unfair competition and give the record to someone else? Yes, you guessed it right, I'm from Nepal. I lived in the Republic of Nepal till 9 months ago when I immigrated to the United States. It is hard to adjust to the desert sun when you hardly get to see the sun through thick clouds between the sky rocket and mountain peaks. But for someone who survived a huge earthquake, food shortages from embargo, and crossfire between the world's two most populous countries, New Mexico, United States is heaven. Most people knew Nepal only as a gateway to Everest. They did not know it was a kingdom. With 26.4 million people, 
It is the 48th largest country based on population, 93rd largest in land mass, but it is landlocked in Himalayas. Nepal was the world's last Hindu monarchy till 2008, after years of bloody civil wars. The civil war started in 1996, when the Communist Party of Nepal tried to overturn the royal parliamentary system. More than 12,000 people died. In 2001, Crown Prince Dipendra killed King Birendra, his own father, Queen Isoria, his own mother, and seven other members of the royal family in the palace. It was really heartbreaking. Then he killed himself at the end. It was said that he did that because his parents refused to accept his choice of wife. However, nothing everyone can take this story as a face value. Let's say, wiping out his entire family over this? You can't blame people of Nepal for having doubts on who is really responsible. Following the campaigns, King Birendra's brother Ganendra inherited the throne. He soon dismissed the entire government and assumed full executive powers to quest the Biden Maoist movement. Eventually, in 2008, Nepal became a republic. In April 2015, the Black Day, a 7.8 earthquake struck Nepal. Two weeks later, on May 12th, another earthquake with a magnitude of 7.3 hit Nepal. What could be worse? We left more than it left more than 8,800 8, people dead and about 21,000 injured. Can you imagine that? These two quakes passed between devastated the land of Nepal. All the Nepal border China and India, there is only two small mountainous paths between China and Nepal, but countless passing point between India and Nepal. And there is also this open border policy between Nepal and India. Citizens of both countries can move freely, work, and live across borders without passports. However, the change, this all changed after Nepal suffered earthquake hits in 2015. In April 2000, on 23rd, September 2015, economic and humanitarian crisis which had several, severely affected Nepal and its economy. Although India denied imposing an undeclared blockade of Nepal, India stated that supply shortages had been imposed by Madesi protesters within Nepal. However, Nepal got only 5 to 10 fuel trucks daily since September 2015, undeclared blockage, compared with 300 daily fuel trucks prior to the crisis. Despite India's continuous denial of blockage till this day, it is hard to ignore the fact that India's stopping of Nepal trucks at Kolkata Harbor, the blockade choked imports of not only petroleum but also medicines and earthquake relief materials. It was horrible. We can't still forget that day. I was 15 when the April 25th, 2015 earthquake hit Nepal. I lived with my house with my grandma in Kathmandu, capital of Nepal, and we thought we were gonna die. We stayed the next two weeks in the field after the earthquake. Few people felt safe going back home after an aftershock of 6.7. The government was overwhelmed and provided us little relief. But many volunteers in the community shared their food, water, helped us through the terrible time. They did whatever they could do for us. We finally moved back to our cracked houses with all fear, but a few days later, the nightmare came true. 7.3 aftershock happened on May 12th. Many cracked houses crumbled into pieces, and but the dead toll to some of the people moved back to the cracked house a few days later. After the 7.8 earthquake, many of them died. Second 7.2 earthquake hit. In addition to 8,800 people died. Quick left 3.5 million people homeless and the economy dropped out, drop off 10, point, 10 billion USDs. Although I was young, I thought the earthquake brought the best and worst of people. Although everyone in the Kathmandu suffered, many people shared what they had with the people with nothing. And we also saw the worst of the people. Tons and tons of donations were taken by greed. People would sell relief supplies for their own gains. Gasoline became a luxury 
most people could not afford, especially after the India blockade. Many school buses stop service because they do not have fuels. And many students can't go to school because of that. The economy took a dive. If you go to Kathmandu today, you can still see the cracked houses as if earthquake hit us just yesterday. I knew I should be happy to I should be happy just to be alive. But I want to have a future and I want my country to have a future. My parents knew my frustration, but there was little that they could do. I wanted to stay, study in the United States of America, but they couldn't afford to pay for it. Then I heard about America's visa diversity program, so I quickly submitted an application. I was 17 at the time. I knew the odds of winning one is less than sleep, but I thought if that is meant to happen, it will happen. And guess what? I got picked. And nine months ago, I started my new life in America and will be starting to attend college three days later. I thought my life was over when the floor beneath me started cracking. Now I have a new life in this country that I can call home. This is Bisang Bahura. Thank you for watching. The kid from Nepal who entered the USA through a diversity visa. Although we had only met one of the 50,000 diversity visa holders every year, Bishank's story told us a lot. A lot about the country we hardly knew, a lot about what happened after the devastating earthquake, and a lot of young men's ambitions for a better life. I don't know how they picked Bishank from the many applications, but I am impressed with his fluent English after coming to the USA for only nine months. Actually, he spoke three languages and will be a freshman at my current college in three days. Like he said, tough times can bring the best and the worst of people. We are in a chaotic time, and we can't deny that not all diversity visa recipients can survive in the United States. But if you can survive and thrive with the limited resources you brought with you to your new country, maybe you have the spirit we need to make this country even greater. After starting college and deciding to major in business, I tried many different part-time jobs. I want to support myself financially, and most importantly, I want to experience life. I have worked as a busboy, an intern at a law office, an assistant property manager, and an Uber driver. I understand the value of hard work, and I think that it is the most valuable education a young person can have. Our team met Bishank at his work at an, in a hotel lobby. We were impressed by his great work attitude before finding out his attitude towards life. I mean, when life gets tough, I get tougher. Maybe you have never been to New Mexico, and maybe you have never met anyone from Nepal. And most likely, you would not bother to find out why someone moved to the United States. And maybe you do not agree with my point of view. But whatever you think, let's give a thumb up for his spirit and shake his hand for joining us. This is Chandler Carson Blue. Thank you for watching.